Hi guys, it's Cynthia Lumsey and today on Congregate and Create we have Greg Gilmore. He'll be demonstrating how to properly apply a relaxer. I love this artist so much. He's such a good friend of mine, a great stylist all around, and he's well versed in how to apply relaxers, how to cut hair, and also how to color hair. Again, Greg Gilmore. My name is Greg Gilmore and I am here to show you guys how to properly apply a relaxer. A lot of people um, opt for chemical straightening, um, some people don't, but some people do. And I always say that chemical relaxing is just an option. It's an option that you make based on your lifestyle and uh, manageability. So that can include if you are someone who has really extreme coily hair. Um, or curly hair and you would like to maintain a more straight style um, the majority of the time then chemically relaxing your hair could be an option for you so um, there are a couple different procedures um, a couple different um, couple different things that you want to look out for before applying your relaxer a lot of stigma comes from chemical relaxing and I think that is due in part from improper application um, and improper home care after receiving a chemical relaxer. So what's very important is being mindful and knowledgeable about what kind of product that you're using, um, how you're applying the relaxer, and if you're making the necessary precautions uh, to protect the strands of hair as well as the scalp, the client's scalp. So all of those things are very, very important. Now, before I begin, this is Kim, and I name all my mannequins, okay? So this is Kim. Kim is chilling with me today. She's going to receive a relaxer. Her hair is already straight, but we're going to pretend <laughs> that she is curly or oily and in need of chemical straightening, okay? And so I'm going to give her a relaxer today. Um, her hair is pretty long, and so I want to first demonstrate um, a virgin relaxer application which is a client who has never received a chemical um, straightening process um, or has not received it to the point that there is no chemical straightening on her hair so maybe she received it five years ago and she stopped and she grew her hair out and so now she's here again for another chemical straightening process uh, but her hair is totally natural again she has all her original curl pattern and so she will still be considered a virgin relaxer and so then I'm going to demonstrate in this top right quadrant um, a chemical relaxer retouch okay and so that just means that she has been chemically straightened however her new growth is coming in and we need to touch that up okay so I think that it is safe to say that Kim is ready <laughs> she's ready for her chemical straightening and we're going to get right into it. So there are some things that we need to consider before we begin. First, I will apply gloves. I want to protect my hands because, of course, if you're a cosmetologist like myself, um, you want to protect your hands at all times. These are one of our most valuable assets. So I protect them. And I'm going to section her out. So. Usually, traditionally, we will section out the head in four quadrants. Let me take her off real quick. We will section out the hair in four quadrants. In this case, you see three, pretty much, because I'm using this whole back section as one quadrant. And then I have two in the top front, okay, that I have sectioned out. I'm going to begin in the back which is where I normally begin any version of Relax or Touch Up. Um, and I'm going to consider what else is next, which <laughs> would be the base. Now, this is a gel-like form base, okay? 
I like the gel formed base because it has some kind of movement, um, which means that it should be easy to spread on the scalp. When you're using bases to protect the scalp that are more, that have more of a thick consistency, uh, such as petroleum jelly, uh, um, or just a very thick um, consistency, then those are harder to apply without getting on the hair strands themselves. Um, and they take a longer time to spread a, across the scalp. When you use a gel-like um, base such as this, because it kind of pours out, well, where can I see? It pours out, so you'll see that it just kind of can drip right, you know, in between. And I like that. So it have very easy, an easy ability to spread across the scalp, which is great. Also, as it hits the scalp, the body temperature will allow it to melt a little bit and further spread, um, which gives you more of an even distribution across the scalp uh, for protection. So I like to use a gel base. This in particular is by Design Essentials, um, and I like a lot of things by Design Essentials. Yes. I'm gonna go through and start at the top. And I usually just like to base those sections here that are already um, pieced out or parted out. And then I will use a rat tail comb. I'm holding the rat tail comb and holding my um, base applicator bottle. And I'll go through and just kind of makes it easier and take about half inch sections and apply the base right directly onto the scalp. And this is something that I usually can do very quickly in a salon. It doesn't take a long time. I've heard, you know, horror stories of, you know, clients coming into the salon and not being based properly before their chemical service, um, which is kind of horrible. You don't want to do that. It doesn't take that long to, you know, apply a little bit of base for protection. And so you can actually see me moving through a lot of hair very quickly because of this method that I like to use, which is just holding the applicator bottle in my hand and just using the rat tail comb to go through and apply that base. And usually if I'm working with a client that has really, really long hair, it's easier. If the hair is a little bit shorter, then of course that's a little bit harder to do. But you just have to take your time and get through it. It's very necessary. Also, when I'm done applying that, I will go and really heavily saturate the hairline. Okay, it's very important to saturate the hairline. Some people just put a little dab, you know, just put a little dab there and feel like it's okay. That section will sometimes burn prematurely and you don't want to have the client burning prematurely before you've even applied on the whole head. And then you're in trouble because you'll have to rinse out the hair before you've done applying in certain areas. And so some areas won't be as straight um, or they won't be straight at all, and then you have another area that's totally straight. So you want to be careful about basing thoroughly. Okay, so she's all based up. And now we want to go ahead and apply the relaxer. Okay, so I'm going to need probably one clip for this because I'm going to start at the bottom section of her hair, and then I'm gonna move up to the top portion of her head. So, I usually will section out a part first, clip that out of the way, and then I'll go through and start to apply. Usually you want about an inch to a half inch, depending on the density of the hair. Now, if her density is very, very thick, 
she has a lot of hair. Maybe you want to use smaller partings, you know, smaller sections, which might be half inch sections. Um, you just want to make sure that you're saturating all of the hair um, and making sure that each strand gets a piece of the product. So in this case, I'm just going to use maybe about an inch, inch section and just go ahead and start my process. Now, it's the difference between when you want to do a retouch and you want to do a virgin relaxer. Um, of course, doing a virgin relaxer is going to require you to use more products. So, of course, when you're charging for the service, you're probably going to charge more because you're using a lot more product than you would for a retouch application. However, when I am going in for my virgin, I will start to apply the apply the relaxer about one eighth inch or half an inch away from the scalp first. And the, one of the other reasons I like to start in the nape area or in the back quadrant is because I know that I'll be rinsing that part first. So this may be done processing by the time I'm working at the top and I can rinse this first and I will still have time to allow the top to sit a little bit longer, only about a few minutes longer, to process more. Now with any application, you want to make sure that you are very cautious of your timing. All relaxers typically cannot sit on the hair longer than 20 minutes. So you only have about at max 20 minutes to process the hair. And so you want to move very quickly when you are applying that. And you don't have to like, you know, fully just lump a whole bunch of product on a section. You can use a little bit first, a little bit might go a long way if you're just kind of working it like you see that I'm doing now. Working it just like that. And so I just kind of move really quickly to get this whole section in. Right now I'm using a spatula applicator. So the spatula I think is really good because it helps me to scoop out a good portion of the product and spread it down. You can use a brush with your virgin application which would be cool. However, to note, what's, what's important to note is that when you use a brush that has hard bristles, if you're applying relaxer onto the scalp, say, for instance, in your retouch application, sometimes if you are too rough with that application, then you can manipulate the scalp in a sense, and so that could cause some premature burning. You don't want that. So I use an applicator brush or an applicator like this, like a spatula, because the edges are very soft. This one in particular has these little ridges, and you could probably find it on Amazon, something like that. Uh, a lot of times you can find it in Cosmo Pro. And I will apply with this because it's very soft and gentle to the scalp if it comes in contact with the scalp. So as I said before, um, there have been a lot of different stories, horror stories, in the salon with chemical relaxing and it comes from improper application. Now improper application is one but also what's a contributing factor is lack of knowledge and knowledge is very important when you are considering what type of relaxer to use on your clients. Now I switch back and forth between you know maybe a regular relaxer a texturizer, um, sometimes even a um, sensitive scalp relaxer, which if you have to use a sensitive scalp relaxer, in that case, that client has actually, um, that client actually has a very sensitive scalp. Uh-oh, my applicator came out. 
in this case, I'm using conditioner as a substitute for my relaxer. So it's pretty slippery. It's creating a lot of slip right now. But anyways, um, when I'm... Um, I switch back and forth between different types of relaxers. It depends on um, what is needed for that particular client. Now, if she has sensitive scalp, then I'm going to use a sensitive scalp relaxer or relaxer that's designed for people who have sensitive scalp. That is a relaxer that usually does not include sodium hydroxide, but it replaces the sodium hydroxide with a calcium or calcium and guanidine mix. Um, now, what's important to note about that is that the calcium can sometimes build up on the hair. And so a lot of times you will find in box relaxers that have no lye, um, they usually leave the hair a little bit more dry. Um, I can always tell when a client comes in if she's relaxed her hair at home because she's used a product probably that has calcium or is a no lye relaxer because lye relaxers are usually left for professional use only. Um, and that is because they are more um, severe on the scalp than they are on the hair. And the calcium ones are more soft on the scalp, but a little bit more drying and could be more compromising on the hair. So the ones that are more compromising or a little bit harder on the scalp are left for professional use. Those are the ones that have lye in them. And if you are using a sensitive scalp, you know that you could be using a product that could have a little bit more drying. Um, it could dry the hair out a little bit more. So that's important to note. Now, if the client has an okay scalp and I'm just going in to um, maybe soften her curls a little bit for more manageability and she's just still going to flat iron her hair and wear it straight. She probably doesn't need to have her hair bone straight. She can just opt to use a texturizer which has a lower percentage of sodium hydroxide in it and that way it will just kind of gently release her curls so that they have more of a looser curl pattern. They're easy easier to manipulate with thermal heat and that that way they will retain a lot more elasticity in the hair which will leave the hair with a lot more strength. Sometimes if you allow the hair to be relaxed all the way bone straight then you don't really leave room for the hair to have any you know elasticity or bounce back um, and you definitely don't leave a lot of room for the hair to take anything else like a um, demi or semi permanent color. Usually, usually you can still take a semi or demi permanent color. Uh, but if you want to like lift up maybe two or three levels or you want to come up a few more than that, you want to leave some elasticity in the hair um, just to kind of retain that strength so it can take those other processes. And that just means if you want to get the hair you know, anywhere in between 65 and 85% straight, not 100% straight. <laughs> so if you're going to do 100%, <laughs> be prepared to not do anything else to the hair. A lot of times if I'm, you know, relaxing 100%, that usually generally goes for, you know, people who have really, really short hair and I'm just going to be relaxing on the sides and I want that to be bone straight. You know, because I want it to lay and be very, very smooth for the client. So sometimes, you know, you don't need to if you're going to be relaxing um, mid-length to long layered hair. Um, just like Kim's hair or maybe if someone has a bob, you won't need to get it bone straight. I would say maybe about 85% straight. Um, so now that I've applied this on the mid shaft, okay, mid shaft to ends, you can see that was pretty quick. I can go through now and start to retouch the root. Now the reason why I do this is so that you don't have any premature burning before you are done applying on such a dense, you know, client or on such long hair. It could take you a little bit of time to really apply a relaxer. So if you apply it directly on the scalp first, 
then she could start to burn prematurely before you're finished your application all over the head. And you don't want that to happen. So if that happens, of course, you'll be in trouble and you'll have to rinse it really quickly. So now this is even faster, me just going through and applying. And going directly onto scalp now. At this point, you know, her base has probably spread um, with her body heat and she has an even distribution of the scalp protectant or base on her scalp and you can go ahead and just move quickly applying this directly to the new growth as well. Sometimes, in some cases, if you know that you take a lot longer to apply, especially when working with the Virgin Relaxer, you probably can start off by using a texturizer. I would stay within the same brand. So if you're going to use Design Essential, if you're going to use Revlon, if you're going to use um, Mazzani, um, stay within that brand. And I would alternate the relaxers. I would use a texturizer or a low lie um, relaxer on the mid shaft to ends with the first part of the application. And then I would. Um, go through, or I left this part out, I forgot to get this part. Um, I would use a texturizer, mid shaft to ends, and then I will go in with just a regular strength um, in the root right after I applied that. And that would give the end a little um, less compromise, seeing as it has the product on it the longest. You know, the product is sitting on the mid shaft to ends the longest throughout your whole application. So maybe you want to start off with a texturizer or a mild um, application first, then go in and give you enough time to not have the um, hair sitting with that product for so long. That also is dependent on how long it takes you to apply relaxer. Okay. And here is her front right quadrant. And that was really quick that I applied that relaxer. So, you know, some people are like daunting when they think about the relaxer and how, how fast it has to be applied and how fast you have to rinse it out and if they're going to start burning or not. But if you follow all the directions, the ones that I'm giving you today, <laughs> then you will have a much easier time with your relaxer applications and you will lift off that fear, you know, of being able to provide a service for your clients. And so here I'm going to demonstrate how to do the retouch application after you've done um, relaxing on the ends before. So I'll go back to my applicator bottle. I'll go directly in and just base her scalp just like I did before real quickly. And I've been doing this for so long that I'm very, very quick. You know, I'm used to getting it on there. Sometimes I might follow with my thumb as I apply just to kind of get a good spread. And I move so quickly, sometimes you can miss that if you're, if I didn't point it out, but it's okay. <laughs> so, and then of course we want heavy saturation around the hairline, very important. The hairline is very delicate and it's so exposed, it's the first area that burns. So now, okay, so we can just easily assume that her hands are straight, we're doing the retouch, so we just need to apply um, relaxer in the root and usually how I will do that I will start I tend to start bottom working my way up because I can move hair out of the way versus if I start here and have to move all this hair back out of the way to move down I just like to you know start from the bottom let that hair kind of sit out of the way and just move into the next section as I move up the head so a lot of times in this area I will start on that hairline and then you can come through grab some hair and just apply it right there and move very quickly just keeping it here and I will just you know apply a little bit And 
can see how fast this is. It's very quickly that I'm moving through. And getting all that product on there very quickly. So one of the things too, now when you're working with extremely coily hair, which is kind of that tightly, tightly, tightly coiled hair, um, or curly hair, or if you're working with just curly hair, you need to go back through and smooth out that area that has been, um, that has been, uh, that you have put the relaxer on. So you have to go back through, and this is actually after you've applied it on the whole head, the entire head, you'll go back to the section that you first started in, and you will, sometimes with this part, I'll actually work up down so I'll start in the top and I'll work my way down because I can move the hair out of the way so it's just stuff that makes common sense to you you know you can apply this however you'd like but most importantly is that you go back through to smooth and you work very quickly so I'm going to move and now it's a taboo type of thing if you should comb the hair if not um, it just depends on that client, how sensitive their scalp is. The reason why people say that you should not comb through the roots to smooth them is because the heads of the teeth um, on the comb will manipulate the scalp causing premature burning. Any manipulation, any scratching, any wounding or puncturing to the scalp while it has the chemical in there or before you apply the chemical will cause premature burning in that area. So sometimes I will go through with the comb and not touching the scalp, just gently smooth out and comb upwards on the strand. And then I'll take my thumb and smooth it. So I'll move through gently by not touching the scalp, put a little tension there and smooth it and usually I'm working very quickly so I'm usually moving at this pace and you can see the reason why I'm working down the head Boom, and now that section is complete. So that was pretty easy, right? And pretty quick, pretty sufficient. And so, there you have it. You have the version application and the retouch application. Now, one thing to note that I forgot to mention is that when you are doing the retouch application, you have an option to protect the previously relaxed mid shaft to end. You can use a protectant. Um, Design Essentials has a protective call Restore. You can use this and you can apply this before you start to apply your relaxer or chemical straightening onto the mid shaft. After I'm done processing this uh, relaxer, I will take her down to the bowl and we will shampoo her hair. Now the first phase of neutralizing the chemical relaxer is the water. Water sits on the pH scale at 7. And so when you're working with a relaxer, uh, you're working with a chemical that is highly alkaline, which usually sits in between 12 and 13 on the pH scale. And so we want to slowly, you know, and um, be careful to just really let it come down from that alkaline into a normal, you know, pH resting state, which hair, as we all know, sits at 4.5 to 5.5 on the pH. And so the first part of neutralizing it is the water. Once you rinse thoroughly, which I usually rinse maybe two to three minutes all over the head for a while, um, I will go in with a neutralizing shampoo, which is really in um, the same shampoo that is you know advised or that goes with that brand. So if you're gonna use Design Essentials Relaxer, you're gonna use the Design Essentials Neutralizing Shampoo. And so I will use that neutralizing shampoo to further lower the pH down to its resting stage 
and neutralize any remaining relaxer that could be in the hair um, even after the rinsing. I will do two shampoos with the neutralizing shampoo and then I will go in with either a, a clarifying shampoo or um, a moisturizing shampoo after that. And then I will put on a reconstructor uh, or some kind of protein strengthening based conditioner that is usually um, in alignment with that brand uh, and that will further just um, strengthen the hair it'll bring it back to its normal resting pH and it will reconstruct some of those bonds that have been broken from the chemical relaxer so following those steps after the relaxer application which is rinsing thoroughly neutralizing shampoo twice moisturizing shampoo and then a strengthening protein based conditioner will really allow the hair to live well and be healthy um, although it's chemical chemically treated um, and those steps are very important okay so Kim is done she's going to the ball so before I move into the next steps I wanted to also show you this is Kim as well this is Kim as well this is Kim too okay and so Kim has shorter hair okay and so when we want to apply the relaxer on shorter hair I like to apply the application a little different so uh, because her hair is so short on the sides I tend to apply it on the sides and then the nape first and then I move into the top portion of the head so on um, Kim 2 I'll just show you real quickly now we're going to assume that we've already based her scalp We've gone through and applied the base and everything like that. And we've also put some protective on the hair that's been previously relaxed, but is a, a, a slightly longer. And also that's very important if you want to maintain and keep this length and you want it to be healthy. So I will go through and I just want to um, quickly demonstrate how I would apply the relaxer here. So because the hair is so short, I would just go on in. And usually I can part the hair with the back end of the spatula and I can go through and start to apply it. This process usually is very quick. Again, I would apply this in the nape first because it gives me some time and if, in case I need to relax or rinse that area out first, I can because I can just kind of sit her back into the bowl and rinse the nape first and allow the top to process more for a little bit longer time, up to maybe about five more minutes. And you can see this is very quick how I'm doing this. And I would normally go around the sides and just make sure that I'm applying this relaxer all the way up. And of course the hair starts to get a little longer, so you really have to use the back, the rat tail comb or rat tail part of the spatula and then I will start to probably use my hands as I got into longer length and just start to go around this whole area and I usually work you know in a horse shoe shape so I will go you know from left to right applying as I move up to the top of her hair or up to the lengthier parts of her hair so I'm moving through moving through okay and you can see how quickly I'm moving through all the way to the top. kind of keep going until I have all that applied at the root and you know some people think that you know especially if you're new to cosmetology and maybe you're a student 
you're kind of intimidated because you feel like, oh my God, I can't apply a relaxer that quickly. Just have to practice. Uh, the more you do it, of course, the better you get at it. And over time, you just have such a sufficiency in doing it that it becomes like riding a bike. And so now that's pretty quick, right? And she's all applied there. And then from that point, I would start to section out her lengthier pieces, working from the bottom to the top. And I would just move through that whole head there. Making sure I have it all applied. And see, I'm leaving out her previously or previously relaxed ends and just applying to the new growth, <clears throat> new growth area. And so that's pretty quick. And sometimes I will just go ahead and cross over. I may not even turn her all the way around and start from the bottom. I'll just keep going, you know, right across on the top. And is really easy. I do this often. So it's really easy for me. And I will just move through. And I'm sure that probably took me maybe about five minutes or less, you know, just to really apply a retouch on some short hair. Now, of course, the timing does differ depending on the density of your client and her hair, the diameter. Um, she could have really fine hair and that fine hair doesn't need to be, you know, take you a little longer. So, I mean, take you a shorter time. Um, or her hair could be very dense and it could take you a longer amount of time. But either way, you're going to be very quickly or uh, move very quickly. Other thing to note is that when you are working with very dense hair, you probably want to opt for regular strength. Regular strength will really, you know, break through, break through those strands, get the work done, the processing done, and then you can rinse it out. If you're working with very fine or medium to fine hair textures, um, it may be best to use a texturizer or a low light relaxer, something that has a lower percentage of sodium hydroxide, just because it will be less abrasive on their already delicate tresses. And so it will probably break down the hair a lot easier. So those are just things to keep in mind when deciding which relaxer to use on which particular client. So, oops. now I have Kima here and I just want to demonstrate after the hair has been chemically straightened, we have neutralized that and conditioned her hair. I will go in And so, what I like to do is just get like a spray bottle and just make sure it's still pretty wet and damp. It doesn't have to be dripping damp, but I just like it to be somewhat moist. Okay. And at this point, you also can apply some kind of leave-in conditioner. Um, I will apply a um, leave-in conditioner that is in the spray form and or a leave-in conditioner that is cream based. It just depends on the density of the hair. If the hair is finer, I like to use a um, I like to use a leave-in conditioner that is just more liquid form, so it's not too heavy on the hair. If the hair is really dense, then I can use a cream based leave-in conditioner um, that will really saturate and absorb into that hair. 
Uh, the leave-in conditioner is very important, I feel, because it adds an extra layer of protection through thermal styling and just everyday wear and tear. So now I'm going to go in with um, a wrapping mousse. Now this is just not a typical mousse or just any kind of mousse. Some people use volumizing mousses for different things and some people use other mousses. You want for this type of molding in particular to use a wrapping foam. Usually it will say that it's for wrapping or something like that or molding. Um, one is Design Essentials. I like this one. Um, I've been using this a lot. Another one is Nairobi. They have a really great um, wrapping foam. And so I just have a little bit of Nairobi in here and so I'm just going to use it. And apply that onto the hair. And usually I like to get it nice and saturated. And so then I will go in with my comb. And a lot of times I will just kind of start in the middle here and just make a little tiny little circle. And then from that point on, I will move everything else down and just wrap, wrap the hair. And I just tend to mold the hair down all the way flat. And this will just give you a really nice um, canvas for curling and styling. They'll give you a really nice, flat, smooth shape so that you can put curls in the hair, you can style it with thermal heat, however you like, but you want to start off with a very smooth, smooth canvas or smooth base. And this allows you to have a very smooth base for styling. It's typically on short, relaxed hair. Um, Typically, you won't have to use this on hair that is naturally straight and short. You just want to blow dry it or rough blow dry it and apply product. However, if you're working with someone who's not naturally straight, maybe she's wavy, curly, or coily, and we've done our relaxers um, process to smooth out her ends, we still want the strands not to dry frizzed. We want them to dry smooth. And so that is the functionality of you know, molding this hair that we are allowing those strands to be very smooth and we want a very smooth canvas to work with as we want to style the hair. So then I'm going to go in with wrap strips after that. This is just going to make sure that the hair stays very smooth and molded while it's under the dryer drying like that. Because sometimes if you just allow it to dry without the wrap strips, you can have little hairs that lift and you don't want them to lift before they're dry. You want everything to stay smooth and flat while it's drying. And when it's thoroughly dry, um, you can take these wrap strips off and then you will see that it's very smooth and laid. And that's how we like it. All right, so a lot of times what I like to do is just kind of blow out the mold with a, using a comb and just my blow dryer. Now, if you're working with a client that is chemically treated, um, and that could involve color as well as relaxer, you want to be mindful of your heat. 
And so a lot of times I will use a heat protectant, such as a, you know, just a polish, like Design Essentials has a nice polish that I like to use. I'll spray that in the air first. And just very lightly so it's not like too much, too much. And then that will just act as a layer of protection from the thermal heat. And I'll go through maybe starting in this um, crown area and just do some really nice soft curls. A lot of times I will start in this area and just kind of move away from the face but kind of towards the face. That way I kind of pop the hair out with a little bit of, you know, volume at the root and move that, that piece to the side and just kind of move my, work my way towards the front. And I will just do that all the way as I get to it, towards the front. Now my heat temperature is pretty much three, I mean um, 410. Which is pretty cool. And it's very important to just be mindful of the heat. A lot of times I will just kind of hit it with the heat a little bit, maybe once or twice, and then I can go in for a really nice, nice crisp set, and that should be it. And I'm taking maybe about half inch sections. If the hair is naturally straight, then of course you know a lot of times you can take larger sections but if the hair has been you know relaxed or something like that just to get very very smooth finish i like to use smaller sections and so that might mean you know they're one third of an inch you know width section you know or they might even be smaller than that it just depends on the density of the hair and so I'm just going through all the way until I get towards the front and just working back through. I will, you know, use my rat tail comb to drag out the hair first, you know, which allows the hair to have separate, be separated as it's passing through the heat. My curls are looking pretty nice already. And so I'll do the same on her right side of the head. on how the hair is cut but usually I don't have to clip hair out of the way unless I'm working with a lot of length. If I'm working with shorter length I can just kind of move it out of the way. The other thing about using the foam to mold the hair with and wrap it is that it actually gives you a little bit of control, curl memory. So you have a little layer of control memory in there when you are curling the hair which is another thing I like about using the foam. So I'm just curling this up. A lot of times this is, you know, the fun part because you do all the chemical, you do all the prepping of the canvas just to get to a point where you can be creative and you can have fun styling um, or cutting, which is my first thing. I absolutely love cutting hair. Um, but 
but you have to do so much to prep the, the canvas or the client. You can say client, but I always like to say canvas because we're artists anyways. And so as artists, we're creating great art on living human beings who actually shine as a result of our treatment. So uh, we're a special, special type of breed that is able to create art on living human beings. Um, you know, it's a little deep for me. You know, I take it on a little deep ride. You know, I'm thinking about a lot more um, and the deeper meanings behind um, why we do what we do. But it's very important to master the craft of artistry in hair because a lot of people house their confidence in their hair and their self esteem lies in their hair. And so if the hair is not right, then usually your attitude is not right. And you want to have a good attitude as you're moving through the world and taking care of the business. And so as cosmetologists, we're actually very essential because we provide good feelings and confidence um, in each client. And we also build characters, um, personalities and identities within the hair because a person tends to identify themselves a lot by how they wear their hair. And so we get to be in the forefront of helping people decide who they want to be, um, you know, every day by giving them a particular structured look or a particular fun look or we're adding color to give them some type of self-expression or we are cutting them in some kind of mod shape to allow them to show their serious side. You know, we are very in control of, you know, manipulating and presenting certain characters on clients or campuses. So I think it's very important work of, you know, what we do. So a lot of times, you know, I'll go through and I will comb out. I use like a large tooth comb like this. And sometimes I will, you know, go through and maybe even apply like a little putty or a little bit of working wax or something like this. This is just like a little styling wax. And, you know, just a little bit. This is actually one by Matrix that I'm using. And I can just use a little bit and maybe emulsify it in the tips of my fingers. And I can go through on the ends just to kind of bring the ends together and give them a lot more smoothness that kind of thing and it's a working move so you can kind of play and so then I will move through the hair like that Keep it like that. I think that's pretty dope. Some 
looks pretty nice. And there you have it. She's ready to go. Bang. So, voila. There you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation today. I'm just showing you guys some tips and tricks that have worked for me um, pertaining to chemical relaxed hair, how to apply it, how to neutralize it, um, some of the benefits you can get from using a relaxer system. Um, again, it's just an option for your clients who have particular lifestyles, who like to maintain a short or straight style the majority of the time. Um, and this is also just some styling tips that I like to use uh, for myself that have been very satisfactory for my clientele um, and people who have come to sit in my chair. So I hope that you enjoyed everything that I had to share today and I'll see you next time.